Hi, thanks for joining me. If you're new to the channel, hello, my name is Jamin and I'm a third year undergraduate mathematician at the University of Oxford. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you something that's really, really cool and in my opinion, such a counterintuitive result which just isn't talked about enough. Um, this is really, really fascinating and I haven't seen any other YouTube videos about it and even if you like try and Google it, there aren't too many articles about it, but I think this is fascinating, so I wanted to share it with you guys. So what is this fascinating result? Well, suppose we have someone called Alice and they are allowed to choose a polynomial, which we're going to call P of X, which has coefficients uh, being non-negative integers. Okay, so this polynomial can be, you know, a, li a linear function, it can be a quadratic, it can be degree 4,829. It doesn't really matter as long as all the coefficients are non-negative integers. Now, Alice keeps this polynomial a secret from Bob. And what Bob wants to do is try to work out what P of X is by asking Alice to plug in certain numbers into P of X, tell Bob the output, and then once Bob has enough information, Bob should then be able to work out what P of X is. We want to know what is sort of the minimum number of guesses Bob sort of requires to be able to guarantee that he knows what Alice's polynomial is. So Bob can ask to plug in certain numbers into Alice's polynomial, and then from that, Bob, Bob's supposed to be able to deduce what this polynomial is. Now what absolutely amazing is Bob can actually get Alice's polynomial in just one guess. So he can ask Alice to plug in just one number into her polynomial and then that will spit out some number and then from that number, from that output, Bob can uniquely determine Alice's polynomial. How bizarre is that? So Alice's polynomial could be any degree, any length, provided all the coefficients are non-negative integers and from that alone Bob can get Alice's polynomial with just one guess. Let's jump into how that's possible. Okay, so what question is Bob going to ask Alice so that Bob can determine the polynomial P in just one guess? Well, that question is, Alice, what is P evaluated at pi? Okay, so Alice will plug in pi into her polynomial, it will spit out some number, and that number she will then read off to Bob, and then from that, Bob can work out the polynomial p, or so I claim. Let's see why. Firstly, let's call whatever p of pi is p0 for now. So p0 is just going to be whatever p of pi is. So whatever Alice gets when she plugs in pi into her polynomial. Okay, then what we're going to do is firstly show that there's only one polynomial that has po not a non-negative integer coefficients, such that when you evaluate it at pi, you're going to get p0. And that polynomial is p. Okay, so to prove that, we're going to do it by contradiction. So suppose there exists some polynomial Q with Q does not equal P. So suppose there exists Q, a polynomial, which isn't equal to P, such that Q of pi equals P naught, like so. Well, then what we can do is actually introduce D which I'm going to define as follow d of x, which is just going to be p of x minus q of x, like so. And now in particular, d of x is non-zero, because p and q aren't the same. And also, d of x is a polynomial, because p of x and q of x are polynomials. And d of x will have integer coefficients, because p and q both have integer coefficients. Notice that d may not have all non-negative integer coefficients, but that's fine. D just has integer coefficients. And in fact, all we need is for the coefficients to be rational, and obviously integers are rational. So D of X is a polynomial with uh, rational coefficients, but notice that D of pi is equal to P of pi minus Q of pi. Now P of pi is just P naught, that's how we define P naught. And we're supposing that Q of pi equals P naught. So we get P naught minus P naught, and that of course is zero. So we have that D evaluated at pi is equal to zero. But this is a massive concern, and in fact this is our line of contradiction, because D is a polynomial with rational coefficients, but because pi is what's known as a transcendental number, which means it's never the solution to any polynomial with rational coefficients, that means that D must be the zero function. Okay, so that means that P must equal Q, and we get a contradiction because we're assuming that Q does not equal P. Okay, so let me just go over that. Pi is a transcendental number, which means if you take any polynomial with rational coefficients, and um, any, po any non-zero polynomial with rational coefficients, when you plug in Pi, you can never get zero. So this is something I'm not going to prove. This is actually quite a, you know, a high-level property, but it's a very 
well-known property that pi is transcendental, but this guy here kind of contradicts the fact that pi is transcendental, and that, that's not true. Um, because d is a polynomial with rational coefficients and it's non-zero by assumption because we're assuming q does not equal p. So there's no way when you plug in pi you can get zero. So this is all a contradiction. Hence, if you go back to the start, that means there's only one polynomial with non-negative integer coefficients such that when you plug in pi, you get p naught. And that one polynomial is the p here that we're looking for. Now, so we've shown, so basically now what this tells us is if we can find some polynomial, let's call it I don't know, s of x, which is a polynomial such that s of pi equals p naught, then we're done. Then we know that s must equal p, and then we'll, we'll be finished because we found p. Okay, so let me clear up the whiteboard and we'll continue. Okay, so remember that Alice has a choice of an infinite number of polynomials to choose from. It can be any degree she wants, and the coefficients can be any non-negative integers she wants. So what we're going to do is narrow down that polyn that family of an infinite number of polynomials now to a finite number of polynomials and then just test each one and then from that we can then deduce which one p is. Okay so we've got to reduce an infinite family of polynomials to a finite family. Firstly let's just write out a generic version of p of x so it's got a constant term a0 which is a non-negative integer, a linear term a1x and so on all the way up to a k x to the k where k is the degree of the polynomial. Now remember at the start k is unknown to um, Bob but I'm just writing out sort of a generic degree. Okay, so once we have p of pi, I claim that we can reduce p down to a finite number of options. Well, how is this possible? Well, it'd probably help if I give an example for this. So suppose we get p of pi, and let's just suppose it's 72.864 something something something. Okay, so p of pi is 72.864 something something something. Well, now we can just use a little bit of uh, our knowledge of raising things to powers. We know that pi is bigger than 3, so then that tells us that pi to the 4 is bigger than 3 to the 4. Now 3 to the 4 is just 81, and 81 is very clearly bigger than 72.864, so this is bigger than p of pi. So pi is bigger than, uh, sorry, pi to the 4 is bigger than p of pi. So what that tells us is that any sort of term, if I perhaps write in the, the x to the 4 term, any term after, from here onwards, the coefficient must be zero, okay? Because if we had, say, a4 being non-zero, so say it was one or bigger, then that term there would be at least uh, pi to the four, which we know is bigger than p of pi. And remember from the fact that everything is a non-negative integer, all of these guys here will be non-negative, so then we'd have that p of pi is bigger than or equal to pi to the four, which would then be strictly greater than p of pi, and that, of course, is a contradiction. So that tells us then, in this case, when we have that p of pi is 72.864, that p is just a cubic. So anything from uh, degree 4 onwards must be 0, otherwise we'll end up in a contradiction. So that will tell us that p is a cubic, but we're still not done yet, because there still are an infinite number of cubics, because the coefficients can take an infinite number of um, sort of values. But we can kind of repeat what we've just done here to bound a3, a2, a1, and a0. Because clearly if a0, so if a0 was bigger than 73, or bigger than or equal to 73, then this term here would already be bigger than p of pi, and then adding on non-negative integers isn't going to change, or sorry, it's, it's not going to make it negative again, it's not going to take anything away, it's just going to potentially add some stuff. So if a0 was bigger than, bigger than or equal to 73, then p of pi would be uh, bigger than 70, bigger than or equal to 73, which is strictly greater than p of pi, and that's a contradiction. So that tells us that a0 must be at most 72. Similarly, we can do a similar thing for a1, and notice that well, a1 then must be at most um, uh, 72.864 divided by pi. So whatever that is, and then perhaps take the floor of that as well, because if it was bigger, then when we plug in pi into this guy, this guy here would be bigger than 72.864, and we'd have another contradiction. And similarly for a2, we can bound it above, and similarly for a3, we can bound it above. And as soon as we can bound it above, we also know that naturally they're bounded below by zero, because by construction, they're non-negative integers. So each of these guys here are bounded, and we found a cutoff point, because we're only considering up to a3. So that means we only have a finite number of polynomials to check. We only need to, in this case, check the 72 different cases of a0, 
matched with the whatever this number is cases of a1 then however many cases of a2 and however many cases of a3 but it will be some finite number and then from the result that we showed on the previous sort of whiteboard is that once we can you know if you plug in pi into each of those polynomials exactly one of them will output what p naught is and then that will correspond to the polynomial that alice has chosen and then we'll be done so in theory if Bob can then work out bounds on a0, a1, a2, and a3, and then test each of those polynomials with, by plugging in pi. He can then recite exactly what the polynomial p of x is, which is absolutely astounding, um, which is really, really cool. Now, I guess one sort of caveat to this, or one thing that I guess we should notice, is that this only really works with non-negative integers. If we just tried to make all the coefficients real numbers, it wouldn't be possible. Um, so it's the fact that they're non-negative and also that they're integers. You can kind of generalize it a bit, which I'll leave as an exercise to you. But I'll leave it at this beautiful result that if someone tells you that they, or if there's someone on the street comes up to you and bets that you can't guess their polynomial with non-negative coefficients in one guess, you can prove them wrong. Um, but anyway, thank you for watching. If you haven't already, please do check out some of my other fun maths videos as well. And if you want to subscribe, I'd really appreciate if. It really, uh, I really appreciate it if you would. I make lots of fun maths content. But anyway, thank you for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Have a great day.